I think we have to hit the continue button. Oh, we do? Is that me? Yeah, that's you. Yeah. Oh. People are starting to come in. So, hello, everybody. Welcome. I see some folks joining us already. We are here for another Norfolk Hub Talks uh, webinar. We're coming to you live from the Hub this time. This is a first, uh, so very excited. Um, this talk is a look at City Meadow, past and present. Uh, it is sponsored by the Norfolk Foundation, and we're very happy today to have Sean Hayden, Molly Ackerley, and Bob Gilchrist with us. Uh, this, uh, this event has been a long time in the making, um, and it's going to be a retrospect of the transition of City Meadow from an agricultural focal point uh, to uh, the, uh, the stormwater filtration system to a natural wetlands park, uh, which will connect to a newly public gathering place in the center of town. So this will kind of give you all of how we got to where we are today. Um, so as every, I can see some more folks are joining us today. And while we do that, I'm gonna give a quick introduction to our panelists, to our speakers. Um, Sean Hayden, who is in the screen below me, uh, he's on his own there. Uh, he uh, received a degree from Renewable, there you go, hi Sean, a Renewable Natural Resource Management and Engineering from the University of Connecticut. He has been a certified soil scientist in the state of Connecticut for the past 35 years. Uh, he has spent most of his professional career helping the towns of Litchfield County with their environmental management goals. And he is currently the executive director of Lake Waramog Task Force. And, and Sean was involved with the City Meadow Project many, many years ago um, during the charrette. So we welcome Sean. Good to have you here. Thank you so much. Thank you. And then uh, sitting there with Molly, we have Bob Gilchrist. Uh, Bob is the design leader and project manager for Allied Engineering Associates in North Canaan. Uh, he practiced landscape architecture for 25 years and engineering for the past nine years. He's been working with the City Meadow Committee for the past four years on developing plans for the City Meadow Connector and Pond Deck. Uh, at a personal level, he, level, he is a, a Norfolk resident. He participated in the town's plan of conservation and development. He is the chair of the Norfolk Rails to Trails Committee and the president of the Norfolk Curling Club. So like everyone in Norfolk, you're on a bunch of committees and you're running out of the room. So Thanks, well, Don. thank you for being here. My pleasure. So now, but certainly not least, we have Molly Ackerley. Uh, Molly is a longtime resident of Norfolk, summered here as a child, uh, and it's been her only permanent home since college. She is a practicing attorney uh, with an office in Bantam, uh, was for two terms a uh, probate judge in Norfolk. She's uh, her longstanding interest in Norfolk and in the natural world, was, and she was one of the founding members of the Norfolk Land Trust and also served on the board of the Connecticut chapter of the Nature, uh, the Nature Conservancy. And she's also served on the board of the Norfolk Library and the Towns Conservation Commission. We see a pattern here in the <laughs> Um, Molly has been involved in the City Meadow Project since before the town officially created the City Meadow Committee in the fall of 2010, um, after the charrette that Sean spearheaded, and has served as the chair committee since its inception. So welcome, Molly. Thank you for being here as well. Thanks, Dawn, for giving us the opportunity to tell you where we've been and where we think we're going. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so just a couple of housekeeping before we get started, I'll share the screen. Uh, we are recording this uh, session. So if you know someone who wasn't able to watch it uh, live, we can, we'll get it to you. Um, and if you have a question as we go along, you can go ahead and put it in the chat, but we're gonna wait until the end to address any questions. I'll be taking a close uh, look at those chat questions as we go. Um, so, without further ado, I'm going to share my screen and turn it over to Molly. So, there you go. Uh, it is, uh, so this is this is the map. I think many people are familiar with this map, the 1904 map of Norfolk. And it shows that City Meadow was then 
the literal is still the geographic center of the town. Um, and that I think is part of why this matters to us. Not so many towns have four acres, approximately three to four acres that are the, the physical and focal center of, of their town with an opportunity to have it be a useful gathering place. Um, the next couple of slides that I'm going to show are, that are what the town looked like, what the city meadow looked like over a hundred years ago, showing, showing it not just as an agricultural center, but to me as something with promise, with the promise of becoming a park. And so the first, the first side on the left is uh, the water tower of Robbins Patel, whose property White House is now the site of the Steckel estate. His daughter uh, created the Steckel, her estate and the yeah, music concerts. And he at one point owned the meadow and this is his water tower. It had had water then too. Um, and he pastored his cows here, but in, the, in 1926, the property was acquired by a Mr. Martini who also acquired property on Route 44. It isn't there anymore. That was known as the Martini Hotel. It was also in later years known as the Brick Block. And when he acquired the Martini Hotel, he also acquired the City Meadow. And uh, his, he had grandiose plans for City Meadow. He had envisioned, so imagine, at the very, at the left-hand side of the screen, the upper left-hand side of the screen was approximately where his hotel was, uh, right on 44. And he had plans for installing a sunken garden, two tennis courts, and a nine-hole course for clock golf. What, I hear you ask, is clock golf? According to Ann Hagemeyer, our librarian and resident historian, it's a popular game in which the players would putt from positions arranged around the dial of a clock, around the holes. So I think what happened was the depression came along and his vision of this being a park in the middle of the town never materialized. Um, and and if the, the, the next picture, and that's the, the not quite the last of my, of my ancient pictures, courtesy of Anne Havemeyer, shows the view from just above the train station across the valley with Haystack on one side, just what a center of town this really was. You can see the water tower on the left-hand side of the screen. And uh, having grown up on some of these photographs, I, I think that it's a wonderful thing that, we're, that the town is now thinking of having this be uh, a useful center as it was envisioned now uh, almost 100 years ago. And then the, the final slide of my presentation is a slide that was the, a postcard. I don't know who took the picture, whether it was one of Marie Kendall's or not, but it shows a much closer view of the, of the meadow itself and that tiny little puddle in the middle is approximately where the pond with its deck is now showing the, the spring fed stream that's coming in from one side and another water course on the other side and then the stream going out that becomes the part of the headwaters of the Blackberry River. This to me is, uh, shows that the sort of the, the vision, the ancient vision and yet in the years after these photographs were taken and years after Mr. Martini gave up on his golf course, the city, as many cities did, turned their back on the middle of town. The cities turned their back on their rivers um, and it became a sort of wasteland. The town acquired it in 1987 um, and for, it, it kept, they mowed it, but not enough. So in the 30 years since the town was acquired it, it basically became a haven for storm runoff and invasive plants. And some of us in the 
well, in the long around 2009, including most importantly, Sue Dyer, thought that we should try to turn it into something that was ecologically more better than a swamp of Phragmites and consulted with Sean Hayden, who at the time was the head, the executive director of the Northwest Conservation District. And he will take you through the, the design, not the, so much the design phase, but the underpinnings of how we came to design the storm water park, the wetlands park that we have now, and then Bob will show you what we're going, what the plan is for the next phase. So Sean, thanks so much for helping us begin this project and over to you. Yeah, no, thank you, Molly. And, and thank you, Don, for uh, inviting me to this. And I'm glad that I could weigh in a little bit with, you know, uh, I was involved with the project probably for a good 10 years and, and would love to share you with what I, what I learned from from that very first day when Sue Dyer gave me a phone call and said, hey, I got a city meadow committee organizing and I wonder if you could help them out with, um, you know, help them figure out what would they possibly would do with city meadow. And so the first thing I did was I, I set up a site walk because I wanted to walk the property. Um, I'm, not a, I'm not from Norfolk and I haven't spent a lot of time there, but um, since then, I, you guys got a really beautiful town and, and um, this could really be a gem right in the heart of it. Um, but from that first walk, you know, Molly mentioned something about how the businesses had turned. It's one of the first things I noticed was how the businesses had really turned their backs to this, um, to this part of town. And um, so I did a number of maps for Sioux, you know, wetland delineation and also uh, a plant, a plant survey of, and realized that most of the, plants in native meadow were invasives. And also there's not a lot of native soil left there either. All, all the soil has been eroded away or there has been fill brought in in certain locations, but there's not, there's not any you know, untouched soils down there. It's really been disturbed. So the next step after I, I did all the, the research and if I, if I didn't mention this, this all started in 2008. Um, and the next step was I put together a charrette for the city meadow committee, but also anybody who wanted to attend. And it was just an exercise um, to walk residents through their vision for what they would think that city, city meadow could be or what could it possibly be. It was a real, it was a real exercise and visioning of all the different things that city meadow could do for the town. And so it was a really fun exercise and there was a lot of, a lot of great ideas. And in the end, um, the city meadow committee came up with a, a, pretty, a laundry list of, of great ideas, you know, ranging from boardwalks to skating ponds to um, uh, stormwater management structures, interpretive signage, um, uh, native plantings and uh, interpretive signs on the storm, the different stormwater structures that could be down there that could clean up all the stormwater runoff that was coming out of downtown and off Route 44. So it, it was a really, you know, there was a really lot, a ton of great ideas that came out of that charrette. And, and then I spent the next several years, you know, working uh, on having an engineer make a design plan, working on permitting, working on uh, fleshing out uh, planting lists for all the infrastructure and stormwater infrastructure. And um, so there was, a, there was a lot of work going on to, you know, implement the City Meadow Commission's vision. So, and then after that, um, there was a number of of engineered plans and things that were put together and that you know had to go to permitting. And I'm trying to think if there's anything else that, that happened of importance between 2008 and when I left the district. I think that's about it. Those are the, those are the main points and how I was involved in, in what happened on City Meadow. And if, if I forgot anything, I'm sure Molly and Dawn will remind me. So 
Sean, I'd be thrilled if you would go through some of your other slides and show just exactly yeah. that what the what sort of what you're looking at up close and some of the possibilities and some of the problems. Yeah, great. No, that's great. Let's let's go to the next slide. So one of the things I noticed there was that um, all the stormwater from downtown and Route 44 were coming out of these large stormwater culverts and the, the, the stormwater was basically completely unmitigated. When you have stormwater coming off of a densely populated area and also a main state highway, it's highly polluted. And um, this all goes into the Blackberry Brook or yeah, Blackberry stream, brook. <laughs> it's been a while. We're and, grandiose in this town. We have rivers and cities. <laughs> and, um, you know, Blackberry Brook is a, is a federally impaired waterway. So in other words, the DEP has recognized it as a polluted waterway. And it's on the, the list of things the DEP, the Connecticut DEP needs to clean up. So that's partially what drove um, the City Meadow Committee and my help to create a stormwater system there that can clean up that water because you know not only are is an eroding you know stormwater channel going through the middle of town an ugly an eyesore it's also killing the blackberries so there's a lot of stormwater mitigation technology or techniques or landscape enhancement techniques that can be implemented implemented between you know these stormwater outfalls and what, where the water exits the property down by the fire department. You know, there's a, there's a whole host of stormwater cleaning uh, techniques that can be employed, you know, across the park. And they can be aesthetic. You know, not only could they be effective at cleaning stormwater, but they, they have a great aesthetic and also can provide excellent habitat for all sorts of you know, whether it be amphibians or pollinators or or migrating birds, it, it would just be a lot more useful ecologically to the native and transient wildlife than uh, than what's there now. So there was a whole bunch of reasons why it would be a good idea to install some stormwater infrastructure in between these outfalls and where the water leaves the leaves the meadow and you've already done that by creating that pond that was a great that's a great stormwater mitigation technique uh, to help clean up the water it's, a, it's a, but there's a number of other things that you can install beyond that so that's the that's the sort of the stormwater story you can go to the next slide Yeah, the Phragmites there was impenetrable. I did, you know, I, I couldn't get into the, this was taken, I think in 2009. I just couldn't, I don't think it probably looks much different now, unless um, there was any kind of Phragmites control. <laughs> but um, I couldn't, I, I, when I was delineating the wetland, I couldn't get into it, but I was assuming that that's where a lot of the wetland soils were, given the fact that, you know, that's what Phragmites loves. So you can go to the next slide. I had, to, I had to put, I had to share this picture of Sue Dyers. She's like, what's the selectman to do? What's the selectman to do? So that's, I, I blame her for all this. <laughs> it's not a great you can do the next slide. And I think after the, you know, after we were, after the charrette and after um, some investigations of the property itself, um, you guys will help me out with who did this rendering, but they kind of did a, a conceptual rendering of what this thing might look like, you know, implementing all the wishes of the, of the city, Meadows, city Meadows original, City Meadow Committee's original visions and ideas for what they wanted to see in City Meadow. So, yeah, so Sean, that uh, that rendering was done by my niece, who who since become an architect, and uh, that was based on the original design. And one of the reasons for including that, I think, is because you'll see at the top there at Station Place that it's even then had the 
goal of having a walkway down from station place. So it was always an intent of connecting the, let's call it commercial center of town with City Meadow and with Shepherd Road. The Army Corps of Engineers didn't thought that this was too much earth moving um, and they didn't like this plan. So we then went to the, the next plan but th there are two renderings that were shown to the folks when this was probably the 2012 maybe. Um, there's this one that, that my niece Katie did. And then the next one that Starling Childs, the younger did, which I think is the best. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Yeah, um, Don, can you go back to that uh, previous slide? Uh, I just thought of something also that came up during the sort of during and after the Shred process, there was, um, oh, and Molly, I think that's really important. I think having access up to that plaza um, is sort of key to the whole thing because you want to be able to, I mean, sure, it's pretty, it'll be pretty to look at one day, but you want to be able to get down there. And, and a bulk of the folks who come to town, I think probably go to that parking lot or go to that side of the, uh, you know, that side of the park. It's the easiest to you know, access, you know, things get a little hairy on Route 44 trying to pull off that road when you have, you know, trucks and the traffic there. Um, but down by the fire station, uh, there was a, um, there's, it wasn't a wetland, but it was a low area next to the fire station parking lot. And the committee thought that it might be good if we could do some kind of parking there, that you guys could do some parking in. Um, I made the recommendation that it could be it could be absolutely porous, a porous parking lot. In other words, it could be a parking lot that not only allows you to have overflow parking for um, whatever reason, but it also cleans all the water that's going you know, that's flowing onto it because it acts like a giant filter. And um, I did some soil investigation down there, and the soil is absolutely appropriate for it. Um, and it would it, it's something that I don't think made it into the final engineering design. It you know because it it is it's not cheap, <laughs> but it you'll never have to do anything again down there if you put a a porous parking lot down there. So there, uh, is, there, and it, there was some expansion of parking down there, but it's um, but it isn't as specifically a parking lot as as I think you had envisioned. Yeah, I mean the. The only maintenance you'd have to do with a porous lot is you'd have to mow it every once in a while because grass grows through the grass grows through it. So, but otherwise, that's the, sort of the Molly and I have given the history of up till now of where of City Meadow. But um, Bob is going to take it from here and uh, move us into the future. <laughs> <laughs> Great, I appreciate it, Sean, thank you. Um, thanks, Don, for asking me to be a part of this, and, and Molly, um, you can go to the next slide. Thank you. Um, yeah, this has been, uh, it's been a great opportunity for me. Um, I've been working with Molly um, and the City Meadow Committee for well over four years. I think the first meeting we have is right across the street having lunch. So um, that was the first discussions. And um, so I was, I was really excited to be a part of it, being a resident here and being actively involved in, in what's happening in town. Uh, so uh, having some input um, was pretty exciting for me. Um, the slide you're looking at is from the plan of conservation and development document that um, planning had um, published in 2019. This was a document to um, help um, guide us moving forward in developing the town, identifying um, the needs of the town, um, issues, uh, things that we can do to, um, you know, overcome some of the obstacles that we have. And to uh, work on some of the things that we have that are great. And so I'm showing this slide because it does depict City Meadow. 
Um, as you can see, City Meadow, as it was mentioned earlier, is definitely a, a focal point for the town. Um, not only the center of town, but the outskirts of town as well. Um, it is an important, and as, as Molly mentioned too, um, to have, you know, almost four acres of open space as your center, town center is, is a gift. Um, most towns don't have that. And um, I, I really loved the early pictures of the open fields. And, you know, the town, that was, um, that was a focal point um, back then. And, you know, as Sean mentioned in Mali, as over the past century, um, the, the town sort of turned its back on City Meadow and it became more of a, you know, a useful thing for drainage and, and such. And even though that is really important, as Sean pointed out, um, it can also be used uh, in other ways. And um, that was the development of the boardwalk, which you see out there today. You know, as Sean mentioned, it's really important to get people in the city metal. Um, that's the only way we can maintain it properly. Um, so, so what the original plans for City Meadow, I guess you want to say part two, um, which was installed, was, was to connect to Station Place. And, um, you know, again, the original idea was always to get people into City Meadow. So um, during the charrettes for uh, the development of the plan, uh, POCD, um, that was brought up and uh, so what you're seeing here was an enhancement of what we have today down there and that uh, was always uh, it was always important to make this connection um, and to um, sort of upgrade to what we have going um, down in City Meadow. Next slide. So the important thing, um, the important thing with developing um, City Meadow and making that connection, when we originally sat down and, and spoke, we were talking about doing a, a staircase. Um, how, how could we navigate down um, to, there was a, there's a, you know, there's a good drop. There's about 30 feet of drop. So what would be the best option of getting down there? And, the POCD in, at the time was, was sort of being in developmental stages. So, you know, we originally were just talking about how do we connect Robertson Plaza with City Meadow. And we started looking at deck designs, uh, a series of decks and stairs. But as we develop this, um, we realized there's a bigger picture here that we're not just making a connection, that, um, you know, the plaza has a, uh, an important role in how City Meadow operates. And we realized that it wasn't just the plaza, but City Meadow, the plaza together created sort of the cog, um, as you had seen in the previous slide, where we're actually uh, providing opportunities to connect um, the town to create uh, sort of a, a, a village center, so to speak. And so we, we looked at integrating the connection with the plaza and that brought us to actually looking at the plaza itself and um, the opportunities that uh, would be presented there. Um, you can go to the next slide. So uh, the plan of conservation development, the goal was to, uh, was to create this village center which would be uh, woven together from various places and activities in town to create this more coherent uh, connected whole. So the concept was more of a campus. And, and that was really driven, uh, pedestrian driven, because uh, you know this is a very walkable, or we want to make this a very walkable town. Uh, you park the car and you walk. You enjoy the sights and you spend money. And that was uh, some of the planning priorities were to maintain that character so people would come and, and enjoy Norfolk for what it is, but we would also be attracting uh, more economic development and strengthen the business aspect of the town because without business, the town dies. 
So that's a really important aspect of the planning approach. Um, so they were looking at enhancing the uh, sense of place and vitality of the community and to promote uh, shared places and a sense of community um, where people would gather um, and it would be shared space where different businesses would be able to overlap in the space so that, um, you know, you sort of had that mix, um, which I think is really important. It's a mix of people, but it's also a mix of um, the business interests as well that uh, makes the, the community strong and improving the uh, pedestrian networks uh, within the village center, getting from the town hall to the library, you know, the, connecting everything together in a, in a way that makes sense. Um, and the possible strategies that came out of the POCD was to uh, actually expand and redesign Robertson Plaza, um, providing a, uh, a real flexible, usable space um, Right now, the space is not flexible at all. Um, it's a fixed design. Um, it's a fountain with some benches, uh, so there's no flexibility there. Um, and it has limited public use. It's basically used for people who want to gather and, and have intimate uh, the socializing together in, in, in a space, and it doesn't uh, allow for anything other than that. And to um, you know, and, and to establish that connection between city meadow and station place, which is always a really important aspect of this. Next slide. So having said that, um, the proposed plan that uh, I'll review with you as we move forward um, is definitely in alignment with the strategies that were outlined in the PSCD and our design objectives for the, for the plan was to create more space for flexible seating and hosting of events. Um, you know, a good example of hosting events, we just had a, a, a music event, uh, you know, music in the meadow. And, um, you know, that's a really good example of how all the different spaces can work together where people sat up on the wall, look down the deck that um, we had worked together on, uh, we put in, um, over a year, it's like a little over a year ago, was sort of um, the first step in, in, in developing what we're calling phase, I guess, two or 1B. But um, it was wonderful. I mean, it, seeing all these people interact and to use the spaces that way was wonderful. And so that's sort of what we're hoping to do with this expansion and new design where we, we can have more of that um, interaction. Um, we know um, history is an important part of Norfolk. Um, Robertson Plaza definitely has history for the town. It's important and some important people were involved. So we feel that uh, connect, keeping that connection with Robertson Plaza is really important. So keeping those ties, providing opportunities for local commerce, allowing uh, say Ryan next door to um, you know, expand out and have something out there as far as the cafe or the restaurants or anything else for that matter, the hub here being able to expand out. So, um, you know, having, uh, providing opportunities, develop a sense of place. Um, we consider that the outdoor hub, um, establishing clear connection between City Meadow and, 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 the, and Station Place. So the details we're looking at, um, I'm not going to read the list because I'm going to go over the plan. So um, we can go to the, the next slide. Okay, so just to give you this plan is the um, it is the the plan out of the uh, bid set, but this gives you an idea of the extent of the uh, what we're looking to do. So basically, everything from the crosswalk at the post office all the way up to um, the Royal Canaan building is going to be, yes, thank you. That's my pointer, I don't have a pointer. <laughs> right. um, so everything in pink is gonna be removed. So it's basically curved all the way to the wall and a lot of the wall is gonna be removed as well. So, um, and this again goes, this is in, in keeping with the uh, POCD for the town as well. So um, just to give you, I just wanted to uh, 
clearly define um, the area we're talking about. Next slide. So the new plan, um, as you can see, when we originally were looking at developing the plaza, um, we originally had the plaza and then we put the decks and the stairs and we realized that the deck looked like an appendage to the plaza as opposed to being intricate and part of, integral part of the design of the plaza. So um, this design is um, sort of using the deck and the plaza to uh, basically expand almost, uh, you know, double, two and a half times um, the size of the existing plaza that we have today out here. So the intent and the design intent was to create an open space and not have a focal point. So it, it's more of a, um, it's a people place. And so the design is basically uh, a series of trees uh, and planting pits. And um, it's really hard not having it. It's very hard. <laughs> I don't have that, but yeah, having a, yeah. Dawn's doing a good job, but. Um, so, so the plaza is an open plaza. Um, we are, we have minimal planting except for underneath the trees so that we have planting pits. There is uh, six trees six planting pits. So the idea was to create the plaza paving in a grid pattern. That grid pattern would carry right into the deck. So the intent was that when you start to walk onto the deck, you still feel at the plaza level. Um, you don't feel like you're actually overhanging. The, you don't get that feeling like uh, you're, you're hanging over nothing until you actually get to the edge of the deck. So the intent was to make that all one level area. Um, and it's, it, it's usable as well because um, uh, it's, it's, it's just open, open space. And we did that on purpose because we're gonna have uh, uh, movable tables and chairs underneath. And that will be flexible based on um, how that space is being used. Um, so uh, during the day, you can have some tables and chairs there. If there was an event like Win Weekend, um, we could take the tables and chairs out and, and vendors could set up um, tables and, and sell their wares. And so there's, there's definitely opportunities here where uh, somebody could or plug in and uh, have a small little um, concert uh, or a show and have people around. So, um, so the design details include uh, trees, so that we have some shade, because right now there's no shade, it gets brutal in the summer. So having shade, um, having flexibility, um, having uh, more space. And as you can see in the design, we have uh, located the fountain up in between the two windows uh, at the building. And that was really important because that is a, a, an important feature of Robertson Plaza. So um, the fountain will actually be uh, reactivated. Um, I can't remember the last time I saw water in it. So it'll actually be an operating um, fountain once again. The other thing that we're, we're also doing is keeping the benches because those were donated. So those are very important too. So those benches will be located uh, adjacent to some of the planting pits as well. Um, another thing that was really important and it is important as part of the POCD was uh, bicycle travel, um, bringing bicycles into town. So we are gonna have an area where we'll have bike racks and allow people to park their bikes and you know go over, have a sandwich or uh, go to the restaurant or just take a breather and uh, grab a bench or a table and, and relax. Um, this is uh, again, going back to, um, you know, on a personal level being part of the rails to trails uh, City Meadow and this development here was really an important uh, component of that because this basically is where the hub of the rail was, um, where that great photograph that Molly had looking out over the, the depot and the train and, and into City Meadow. So, you know, from, from a rails to trail standpoint, you know, going north from here, this is sort of our hub. So people could park here and go to the trail to the north or eventually when that gets developed in the south. So we, you know, this is a, a, an important aspect. 
So biking is an important part of our rails to trails initiative as well. So, you know, having the bike uh, racks, improving lighting. Uh, I know people have uh, complained a little bit about lighting at night. Um, part of the design aspect was to create light uh, here for security, safety, but also for ambience uh, as well. And I'll go into some of the details a little, a little further down. Um, the paving is going to be concrete, um, but it will be uh, a decorative concrete, uh, exposed aggregate. Um, I wanted to distinguish the plaza paving area with the actual sidewalk, which is um, you know a typical concrete sidewalk. Um, the planting, uh, the wall carries through in portions, um, sort of picking up um, the original design of Robertson Plaza and, uh, and just keeping a part of that um, in place. It gives people, not only does it uh, pay tribute to earlier designers of this area, but it also gives people a sense of uh, where they are relative to where they used to be. Um, in, in the plaza as well. So it sort of pays homage and gives you sort of a feeling. I, I you know, I know where I am. Um, we are right now, and, and this was mentioned before, that <clears throat> unfortunately all the businesses on uh, Route 44 uh, sort of turned their back on, uh, well, they have turned their back on City Meadow. So, you know, right now we, uh, we, we, we have put in a screen, um, yeah, planted screen here and a bench uh, to, to add more, um, more seating, uh, getting as many people out here and sitting as possible and focusing out more towards the meadow. And that's really, really the goal here. Um, in addition, there are things that you don't see in the plan, you know, having a Wi-Fi access and, uh, you know, allowing people to use this as a space to work if they wanted to on a, on a you know a nice summer day. Um, you can go to the next slide. So this um, this gives you an idea of a cross section through uh, the plaza. Um, as you can see, it's it's really got this uh, open feel, uh, really this flexible uh, design allows people to use it. You could have small groups, you can have large groups. Um, you can have seating and tables, but you can also do a small presentation. Um, and it just uh, it lends itself to uh, more towards where we feel um, we're heading in regards to uh, developing this uh, um, village concept. And the screen goes back. It, it, not that we don't want to uh, turn our backs on the businesses on 44. Um, you know, eventually we're hoping the future planning, um, they'll turn around and, and you know, uh, connect back to City Meadow. And we'll certainly embrace that. And we provide opportunities to do that in the design. But for now, um, we're focusing our energies out towards City Meadow. And some of the inspirations for the design <clears throat> come from some uh, pretty well-known pocket parks down in New York City. And pocket park is a small park that sort of uh, fills in a gap between buildings. And you know, a couple of uh, pretty pretty famous ones: Green's Acre, Green Acre Park um, and Paley Park, which is really famous in New York City. And I'm, I'm, I'm Assuming that some of uh, some of our listeners, some of our viewers, may have been in these parks, but what makes these parks successful is how they're used. It isn't as much what's in the park; uh, it's how the park is used. And seeing if you took all the tables and chairs out of there, it would just be some paving and some trees. But seeing the tables and chairs and how people interact together. Is what makes uh, what makes these um, sites really successful, and so we use this as inspiration in our design, so that um, you know on any given day, the design of the space changes based on the use, and uh, I, I find that an, an exciting aspect of, of the design of the park. That is not the same thing as it is today, except just different person sitting in the bench. 
but you know how the tables are arranged, how they're being used, um, whether it's a, you know an event or something, it's different. So we found uh, we found this approach to be a, a really nice approach uh, moving forward. If we go to the next slide, how are we doing? Okay. Um, so this is just gives you. Uh, I'm going to wrap up here. Uh, I know I'm dragging here a little bit, but um, a lot of this stuff's really important to get out. So the lighting, um, you know, like I said, lighting was really important. We're using low level lighting. So uh, we're sort of dark sky compliant. We don't want City Meadow or, or Robertson Plaza to glow at night. That's not, that wasn't the intent of the lighting. The lighting is to be low level on the ground where it needs to be. Um, so we, uh, up on the left-hand corner, the planting pits where the trees are, will have low lighting like that. They're sort of wayfinding wing finding lights that uh, allow you to get around the plaza um, safely. The deck lighting, <clears throat> we're also doing deck lighting so that, you know, um, again, for a sense of uh, uh, wayfinding, but also safety as you go down the stairs. Um, the pole lights, um, if you've been up to the library, um, those are the exact same lights. We are changing out the poles a little bit more to match what we have existing uh, out here now, um, but they're going to be the same lights. And I think it's really important to set, establish uh, a sense of rhythm with uh, your materials throughout beyond so that, you know, as you're walking down from the library, the lighting is the same. It's the same fixture down to city metal, even though the spaces are used differently and, and completely different, um, the same sort of, uh, same architectural features are carried through. So um, that, that's the lighting, the planting screen. Um, it's not a heavy duty, uh, you know, we're not putting up a wall, um, but we're just sort of uh, creating this living uh, screen to allow um, sort of some of the screening of, of the dumpsters and things down and back um, and focus us more out towards the meadow. Um, the paving, as I mentioned, if you're looking at the plaza paving will look like that um, with the grid pattern, um, sort of exposed aggregate, more decorative. And then you can see on the sides, um, we will have a band and then we'll have um, a regular concrete, which is uh, just a light broom finish. The tree pavers, the tree pits will be a per impervious, or excuse me, impervious uh, paving situation because what we're trying to do is collect all the water on the plaza and put that back into the ground, uh, groundwater. Um, sort of to go along the same theme, the environmental uh, theme of, of uh, trying to reduce and minimize the amount of runoff and to try to put all the water back into the ground, similar to what Sean was speaking about in, in the city meadow and the wetlands. So that, that's the intent of uh, the drainage on the plaza as well. Um, the deck uh, is the same. If you go down and see, and some of you have been down, um, to see the deck, the, the deck up here is going to be similar to uh, that deck down there. Same materials up on pi, uh, um, piers. Um, so it, it, it's minimal. Uh, it has a great look, uh, lasts a long time, and it's uh, minimal maintenance. So we found that to be very important. And then bike rack um, is kind of a placeholder right now. Uh, we do want to keep something, I want to keep it simple. I think it's really important that the uh, design elements are simple, not to, to take away from um, the intent of the overall design, but to complement it. Um, can we go to the next slide? And finally, uh, the plant material uh, was also uh, carefully selected. Um, it's all native material and it's a, uh, adapted to our zone, which you know, we started at 5A, we're going 5B now because of uh, global change, but um, everything uh, is native material to Connecticut. Um, the upper left-hand corner, um, we're using honey locust in, in the plaza. These are a seedless variety. Um, we wanted, I wanted to put in a tree that had dappled shade, not a heavy shade. I don't want to feel like I, I have a roof over me, but more, I'm just, I'm getting some shade, but I still have glimpses of the sky. So I don't have that heavy feel. Um, and it has a really nice fall color. The service berry, which we're using all on the wall, um, again, another native, uh, attracts uh, 
wildlife um, and uh, has great spring color and fall color as well. The uh, Virginia creeper uh, and other native, uh, which we would use on the screen wall. Again, you can't, uh, can't deny the uh, fall color for sure. Um, we, we do have one large uh, tree that sits down below by the deck, which is sort of designed to screen some of the buildings, um, uh, black um, tupelo, uh, which is a, a wonderful tree underutilized, uh, but it's, it's fantastic form and color. Um, we're using Pennsylvania sedge under the tree pits uh, or within the tree pits under the trees, which I think is uh, one of my favorite ground covers. It creates this nice carpet, it's soft, and uh, it kind of blows around the breeze. It's, it's really a, a wonderful um, ground cover and should do very well. And then our plantings uh, of uh, summer sweet. So we'll have some uh, flowers in the summer. And uh, if you've ever walked by uh, Clethra in, in the summer, it's, it's amazing. Uh, so it, 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 it will certainly, uh, certainly be a nice place to sit um, in the summer for, for uh, just for the fragrance alone. Um, so just to summarize and wrap up, uh, I apologize for rambling here, but um, this is exciting. And, and we, are, we are right now um, in uh, big negotiations. So um, we are planning on starting this this summer. So um, Molly and I and the committee are working with contractors and, and going through the bid process. And, uh, and we look forward to, to getting this in and creating uh, inspiration for others and, and to, to move forward and, and uh, you know, uh, realizing the uh, POCD. So um, I want to thank, uh, I want to thank everybody uh, for your time. And I guess we're opening it to questions. Yes, we can do that. Thank you so much. That, that was great, all of you. Thank you so much. We do have a couple of questions, and if you do, if anyone else out there has any, please go ahead and put them in the chat or the Q and A. Um, the first one is from Judith Maxwell. Uh, Bob has spoken about people spending money in economic development. Could the storm runoff become an underground or covered mecha mechanism and the land you are calling the meadow be filled in so that the actual business spaces could be constructed there? Expanding the town rather than expanding access to ample green or open space already existing in Norfolk. That's the first part of the question. Uh, do you want me to keep reading or do you want to yeah, I, I can start to answer that one. Um, uh, Barrow, uh, it's very hard. I, mean, I want to make sure I say this correctly. Um, it's very difficult to get permits to bury water or, or put, you know, to put water. You know, the, 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 there's a lot of money being spent right now to daylight water that has been covered in the past. In other words, streams that have been put into culverts, under roads, under parks, under, you know, have been buried for whatever reason. Um, the current trend is to unbury them and actually get them exposed and daylight them to the natural environment. So permitting something like uh, by burying all the water structures or all the water features, um, you know, in City Meadow would be very difficult. And, and I don't know, if Bob, if you have any, anything to add to that. So let me, I, I think if we hark back to the 1904 photograph, both you and Bob may have something to say because although this is a degraded wetland, it was always a wet meadow. And I, even if we managed to divert the storm drains somewhere else, we're still going to have a lot of springs and a lot of seeps in there. And I think that even if it could get permits, it would be a virtual impossibility to pave it over. That actually was considered in the 60s and rejected. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I mean, I think, um, you know, I still think it's, it's a gem. Um, we do have, you know, uh, we do have buildings here that are unoccupied <laughs> right now. And I think, um, you know, maybe doing what we're doing here is an opportunity to uh, to get people to um, come to town and, and to occupy space that we have available. Um, I'm not so sure, 
you know, I think we have opportunities to build up here. I'm not so sure putting buildings in the center. Um, I mean, that to me, uh, I mean, the focal point, people really enjoy sitting in, um, standing in Robertson Plaza because of the view. Um, if we put buildings in there or parking lot, uh, it would pretty much take away from, um, I think the whole intent of what we're trying to do in center of town is to bring people in and to enjoy um, you know, what we do, you're correct in saying we do have some open space outside, but Green Man Town celebrating that uh, is the reason why people, one of the reasons why people come to uh, Norfolk. Um, uh, we do have another question. Will it be handicap and wheelchair accessible? No, the, the steps down from Robertson Plaza can't be. I think we, 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 the original plan that had this, a, a, a long, slow path down to City Meadow um, was just, was, it was hoped that that would work. Um, but the, the handicapped accessible paths that are, exist now and they come in from Shepherd Road and they come in from Route 44 just north of the pizza shop. And the pizza shop, uh, the path up behind the pizza shop is built in such a way that there are steps up so that actually if that building were, were required and renovated, you could get down there too. But uh, the handicap stuff is from 44 and Shepherd Road. We couldn't do it down from Robertson Plaza. Yeah, that's correct. So just to, uh, just to add to that, the whole upper uh, plaza area and the expanded deck, that is all handicap accessible. Um, if, and this is gonna develop over time as we develop the north end of City Meadow where Sean was mentioning uh, the parking area, Molly, um, that is handicap accessible, mm -hmm. correct? And the deck that's down there on the, uh, on the pond is, handicap accessible as well. So it's just getting access will be different. Um, negotiating the steep slope and uh, to get somebody down there and handicap accessibility would be very difficult um, down. And, um, you know, just, I, I probably didn't spend a whole lot of time talking about it, but the, we do have a series of decks. Um, not only do we have the first deck, but we have a series of stairs down and a second deck, which is sort of mid-level. And that deck is a, 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 at about the same elevation as the elevation behind Infinity and behind the Arcanum building. And that was designed specifically so that we can encourage them to use that space behind and we can connect to that at that level. Um, so sort of the mid-level would connect it, uh, with the spaces behind there. And then we have another series of steps down to a smaller deck and then and then steps down and then the, the walkway out um, and connecting to the existing walkway. So it, there's a series of opportunities here to have different spaces and uses as you as you drop down um, for sure. So uh, you know I, I, I meant to mention that I didn't I didn't mention that during the presentation that there is a series of steps and stairs and they're laid out and uh, for a purpose and a reason moving forward. Uh, we do have a question from Bill Thomas about the uh, level of the meadow, and he says, by the way, the plan looks great, so I just want to throw that in. Thanks, Bill. Thank um, is the level of meadow lower now than it was in the old pictures? It feels like the street level in front of the old, uh, in front of the post office in the National Iron Bank seem much, so much higher now. Well, I think the answer isn't that the meadow is lower. It's that when, when the trains went out and John Curtis Road went in, um, a lot of that was fill. What was, a, what was a gradual slope is now fill and a steep slope. So that's why it looks so different. Station Place didn't look like this 100 years ago. And uh, Bob, could you say a little more about the other decks, the parking lot behind the Arcanum and Infinity and the general passage down to City Meadow? 
Yeah, I guess I, um, I can see that. I saw that comment. So uh, that's sort of the reason uh, I did bring up the series of decks. Oh, yeah, decks. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I um, down to the, yeah. So that uh, I think I answered uh, answered that question. Here's an interesting one. Where does the name City Meadow come from? Since North yeah. has never been a city, should so, a name change be considered? Oh, no. so, to answer that question, um, it's actually pretty funny. Anne Havemeyer might be the only person who actually knows where the name came from. I can tell you that initially it was called the Patel Meadow when it was owned by Robbins Patel. Um, when it was owned by Mr. Mantini, Martini of Martini Hotel fame and the uh, and, and Norfolk as a uh, destination, a summer destination as the highest spot in Connecticut on the railroad, that, that may have been part of the, I'd call hyperbole that had it turned from a town meadow to a city meadow. There, in the original plan, the planning discussions about names, this came up maybe five years ago or so, should we change the name? And there are a number of people considered a number of names, none of which actually passed muster. And some of them were even more grandiose than City Meadow, mm -hmm. to which I then announced that if we were gonna change the name at all, we had to get away from the grandiose and we could call it the town gulch. <laughs> so it's staying in City Meadow because of historical accident. If somebody, Michael Kelly, if you could come up with a better name, um, I'm sure people would love it. But by now, it's sort of, it is a thing, if you know what I mean. It, and it's, it, it's a humorous thing, but there we go. Uh, we, we do have another question. How do you envision a meadow attracting businesses to occupy the existing building? I, so I can answer that one too. The pizza, the, the, what, what is no longer the pizza shop, um, at, at when, um, the, when the path was designed to go up to Route 44, just north of the pizza shop, that, um, that pathway actually crosses a tiny little bit of the pizza shop property. And so, um, to, to entice the people in the pizza shop to use the meadow and vice versa, a path, a connecting path from the lower level of the pizza shop down to the stairs, down to that piece of boardwalk was part of the final des design. And uh, you can't use the stairs down anymore that, that are from the parking lot where the dumpsters are between the first and what's known as the Thurston Building, the Yellow Building, the dumpsters and the former site of the Martini Hotel, you can't use those back stairs to get down under the deck of the pizza shop anymore. But in the best of all possible worlds, um, it is to be hoped that, that uh, when that building gets renovated and used, that can be uh, a connector again. Anybody has time, but nobody has time. I can bore you with my ice cream parlor story, but I think we don't need to. Well, I think you know, just to piggyback on that, I think having uh, you know redoing the plaza, um, creating opportunities for, and I mentioned this before in my presentation, that um, you know where you have an opportunity to expand your business outside is 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 I think is a, is a, is a great opportunity because. You know, um, working with other businesses in town, um, I think is, is, is important because you know you can share you can share uh, clientele um, depending on what type of business you have, and if you have a, a, a central area where, where these people can intermingle and mix, gives you a great opportunity to expand your you know um, your marketability and. and, and and you're showcasing yourself outside of the four walls of your establishment, I think um, having that opportunity is, is, is wonderful. And I think that, you know, I think as a business owner coming into town, I would be looking at other opportunities besides just the space I'm in, but, you know, what am I connecting to? It's like 
when you move to a town, you know, where's the school? Where's this? You're, you know, you're looking outside of your your property boundary of what I'm connecting to. And I think as a business too, you would, you know, you want to know where the streets are, you want to know where people park, you know, but what brings people to your town? Um, you know, why am I setting up a business here? Uh, what type of business would work here? It's really important. That's all, you know, that's all important stuff. And I think, it, um, you know, having uh, having space outside that, that um, supports that, I think is really important. Um, and, and I don't know if you know the answer to this, is there any consideration of having restrooms available outside? <laughs> a number of people have commented, and um, thank you, Robin, for raising the question, um, um, question of the need for some kind of public facility in, in town. The committee hasn't actually addressed it, but sort of informally, there has been discussion as to whether or not we could have some kind of regular porta potty someplace. I don't think we could, we certainly can't put in public, you know, structures that are public restaurants. It just, it could, structurally, it only doesn't work. Um, but Dawn, uh, once COVID is over, are the restrooms in this building, in the hub, usable by the public? Yes, I mean, right now, if we're open, we do have a public restroom. So you can certainly come in anytime we're open. Um, right now, we have one designated for public use and one designated for staff. But I, I believe over time, we'll probably get back to your mostly men and mostly women's bathroom like we have here. So absolutely. Uh, I don't see any other questions. Uh, the three of you, do you have any other, anything else you'd like to comment on? Or are we good? We're good? All right, I do just want to uh, mention uh, before we wrap up that we hope uh, this summer the Norfolk Foundation to host a follow-up to this webinar, which is looking at what the future of City Meadow can be, what, what are the things that could, what are the possibilities um, beyond uh, the deck and uh, expanded Robertson Plaza uh, project. So stay tuned for that. There's no date just yet, but it'll be coming soon. Um, and then I just want to thank you, uh, Bob, Molly, Sean, so much for being here this evening. This was great. And uh, everyone out there, have a good evening. Thank you. All right. Take care. You as well. Take care, Sean. Bye, Sean. Bye-bye, Sean. Take care.